Welcome to our next session in Going Deeper, our study in the book of Amos. I'm Todd. Glad to have you here with us. Um, we are going to be looking at Amos chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, if you go ahead and turn there. During this time, we are going to be learning what it means to look at the, the words of Scripture and then apply them to our lives. Uh, one good method is called the COMA method. COMA is an acronym that starts that stands for context, observation, meaning, and application. Um, we need to look at these in those proper steps so that we can go from what the word is saying to the word actually being something that then transforms our lives because we can apply it. And so today we are going to look at the passage and really we are going to see today that we are blinded to our greed for ease. I think of the Veggie Tales, um, where they are making a, a play off of Lord of the Rings, and uh, the um, the one character is so concerned about losing his life of ease. Oh, my life of ease! Uh, we are like that. We are concerned about losing our life of ease. So, as we dig into God's Word, let us pray. Father, I ask that uh, you would open our eyes so that we wouldn't be blinded to just pursue comfort and, and, uh, and prosperity at the sake of your mission and certainly in our love for one another. Be gracious to us, O Lord, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Where are we at in the book of Amos? Well, we, we have the book of Amos is divided into three large sections. Chapters 1 through 3 is a, the roaring lion. Uh, chapters 4 through 6 is the encircling foe. And then chapters 7 through 9 is the sovereign Lord. Up to this point, here is how the book of Amos has been laid out. Amos was an unwanted messenger with an unwanted message. As we looked at the uh, peoples of the nations surrounding Israel, we learned that people are not things to be used. As Amos addressed Israel, we see in chapter 2, verses 6 through 16, a no to the Lord is a yes to destruction. In chapter 3, we learned we can't be near God and ignore God. In chapter 4, we learned that the world doesn't revolve around you. In chapter 5, we learned that we need to seek the Lord and live. And last week we learned that wrong, or last time we learned, wrong worship invites destruction. And this time we're going to look at chapters, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, and see how we are blinded to our greed for ease. We are blinded to our greed for ease. This passage breaks up into two sections. Uh, verses 1 through 3 forms our first section, and then verses four through seven forms our second section. So we ask the question, how are we blinded to our greed for ease? The first way is being greedy, greedy for a life of ease blinds us to spiritual danger. We see this in Amos chapter six, one through three. Woe to those who are at ease in Zion and those who feel secure on the mountain of Samaria the notable men of the first of the nations to whom the house of Israel comes. Pass over Kalna and see, and from there go to Hamath the Great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms? Or is their territory greater than your territory? O oh, you who put far away the day of disaster and bring near the seat of violence? We see that being greedy for a life of ease blinds us to spiritual danger. Here Israel is compared with cities that are arguably better than Israel herself. And in looking at these three key cities, um, we will note uh, a few things. Here are these three key cities. Uh, the first is Kalna, which is uh, way up here to the north. This would have been outside of Israel as well, even um, even at its farthest extent. And then we go down to 
We go down to Hamath, which is a, a prime city up here to the north. And then we go all the way down to Gath. Gath is an interesting choice. It's part of the Philistines, would have been very familiar to Israelites and, and people in Judah, of course, as well, too. But Gath was not mentioned as one of the cities there, as uh, there was a, a woe to Gaza and the surrounding cities there in Philistia. So maybe there is um, here now Gath is going to get its um, comeuppance or, or to be referenced here in this book where people are um, not following the Lord, but instead using people um, in, in this way. Um, about these three cities, it, it, there are some interesting things to note. Um, here we're going to look at Zondervan's Illustrated Bible Backgrounds Commentary. This is an excellent work, especially um, for the minor prophets. I would highly encourage you, if you're interested in deeper study, that this be one of your primary sources. Um, it says here that Kalna was this capital of the late Hittite state of north central Syria, roughly halfway between the northeastern corner of the Mediterranean and the Euphrates. It was conquered briefly by the Assyrians on, under Shalmaneser III, um, but was not mentioned again until their records in the mid 8th century in a reference to a reconquest in 739 by Tilgath Pileser III after a revolt. Hamath was an important city-state on the Ornst River, roughly halfway between Kalna to the north and Damascus to the south. Like Kalna, it was conquered by Shalmaneser in 859 BC, but then joined the Western coalition that checked Assyrians at Kwarkwar in 853. In the following years, they lost some territory, but soon recovered it, and like Kalna, it was reconquered in 739, but its history immediately before that is unclear. These are three ways to understand these historical references. Uh, one way is Amos may be referring to the defeats of these cities a, a century previously, though a long time ago it would have been still remembered. Second, Amos may be referring to their conquest by Assyria in their immediately preceding years, prior to 760 BC. While there's no records of this, it's, uh, there is context for this since there was a revolt in 739. Finally, this section may not come before the earthquake chapter 1, verse 1, but after 739, when their defeat would provide a chilling warning. The lesson from Philistine Gath would refer to the possible capture of the Assyrians under Hazel in a southern campaign against nearby Jerusalem in the late 9th century, 2 Kings chapter 12, verse 18, captured by Judah under Uzziah in the first half of the 8th century, 2 Chronicles 26, 6, or to a capture by Tilgath Pileser III in 734 by the Assyrians as they advanced further south. So these three cities, Gath, Kalna, and Hamath, um, were all mentioned as cities that if they can't uh, avoid um, the Lord and his uh, judgment, then why would Israel be able to? Secondly, we see being greedy for a life of ease blinds us to personal calamity. We see that here in verse 4, Woe to those who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David invent for themselves instruments of music who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first of those who go into exile, and the revelry of those who stretch out themselves shall pass away. A few notes about this passage. Uh, one, we see ivory inlaid beds are mentioned in other Mesopotamian sources. And later, um, the king Sennacherib boasted of such beds as tribute from Hezekiah of Judah. Many Akkadian texts mention beds inlaid with ivory and covered with precious metals, but these were placed in temples for their gods. Um, moreover, we, we see an interesting term here. It's the term for revelry. Commentator Marvin Pope says this, from various strands of information, we gather that the uh, Marzea was a social and religious institution which included families, owned property, 
homes for meetings and vineyards for wine supply and was associated with specific deities and met periodically, perhaps monthly, to celebrate for several days at a stretch with food and drink and sometimes, if not regularly, with sexual orgies. Although mentioned in Jeremiah 16 verse 5, um, this word is only used here in Amos. In, in Jeremiah, it was mentioned as a funeral procession. Here, um, revelry is the right word. Israel, known for their lavish parties at this time, will now become the first to be conquered in exile. Here is a little bonus from the British Museum. This is called the Queen's Lyre. It's one of four lyres that were found in a particular location. It would have been about uh, 800 uh, BC, and uh, this would have been about 44 inches tall. The mask of the bull is covered in gold. This would have been the type of lyre referenced there. These would have been primarily found in temples, but now people are so rich they are able to play them in their own houses. Well, so what does this mean? Um, well, it, it means that uh, we must not idolize pleasure. Uh, we must be aware of what the Lord wants and, and not just sit on, on opulent luxury while the plight of those around us goes unnoticed. Uh, too often we're simply experiencing our own comfort, engaging how we're doing by comparing ourselves to one another. There's always going to be someone richer than you are. That is not the standard. The, the standard is, is are we able to love those around us and to show good? Or do we simply use what God has given us stewardship over to simply make our lives more cushier and, and more at ease? We need not be greedy for ease. We should be greedy for God's glory, um, greedy to, to know him better, uh, greedy to love one another all the more. Let us pray. Father, we ask that you just be gracious to us, that, that we would not follow in Israel's footsteps. They are going to be the first into exile because of their great greed and their ignorance, um, whether deliberate um, or, or just because they're so deluded by their own blindness but they do not know the plight of their fellow man. Lord, I pray that we would have a heart for others and a heart for you above all else. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks.